Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to edit to music and editing to the beat. So the first tip I'm going to give you is when to select the music. I get this question a lot. Do you select the music before or after your edit? If you're looking for a place to get royalty-free music for your videos as a content creator, this video is actually sponsored by RitualMusic.com. They have thousands of royalty-free and exclusive tracks for you to browse through by mood, beats per minute, and genre, and more. If you want to check it out, you can actually use my code, Justin Odisho, to get 20% off an annual subscription, or try a free trial. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Now, when you're working to a specific piece of music and kind of constructing a music video to that, you're obviously going to want to arrange the clips to a song that you've picked beforehand because once you go through and you have all the edits and all the cuts, then you put a different song in. It's going to totally change the pacing. All of the cuts are going to be out of sync and it's not going to go as smoothly. There are times when you can just pick a mu music track second, you know, after you edit. That's typically when you just need some background music, perhaps for a talking headshot and you just want to throw in a little, you know, subtle background music, maybe lower the volume on that, lower the decibel level. And it doesn't really matter if you pick it maybe afterhand based on the mood. Another tip that I have for you is you can make this track bigger. So here we have all our audio tracks, A1, A2, A3, and our video tracks. And you can actually make both your video and audio tracks bigger, and you'll get to see more information, especially the waveform. The waveform visually tells you exactly kind of what's going on in the clip. You can see here, you can see when instruments kick in or when other beats kick in. You can kind of get a visual picture of the whole song and you can see here it tapers and fades out. So when you're choosing to edit to the beat, there's a few things you can always keep in mind. Every song has a kind of tempo, a time signature, so every song you can kind of count to it like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I play this song here and you listen to it, you can probably catch some sort of rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you can you can always fall back on those fourth or or whatever time signature. Sometimes there's odd time signatures that are not four by four. But you can always fall back on when that repeats as a standard beat to cut to or, or think about cutting to. But you don't want to cut your whole video at the same tempo and beat as the song because aside from that backing beat or kind of metronome, there's also other instruments at hand in the track. So, you know, you have audio buildups, you have drum rolls, you have loud bass hits. You have beat drops. So these are moments where you can do something like, for example, as the song fades out, when it's approaching this beat drop, you can also add a dip to black transition. So if I head over to my effects panel, go to my video transitions and do something like a dip to black, or you can always right click, apply default transition. The default transition is a cross dissolve, but you can see here, if we dip to black, it kind of matches how that instrument fades out and that track fades out. And then if we cut to another clip, you can see how you're giving the viewer the idea that these two things are, are in sync with each other. The video and the music are kind of matching in, in their mood. Every song is going to have a different feel and mood to it. Uh, and this can influence your decision on a lot of things, um, not even just the effects you use, even like the color grade. A happy song, you might require a warm and vibrant color grade, whereas a sad, dark song, you might go with a more desaturated, maybe vignetted look, something like that. So this video isn't really focused on how all these effects and color grading works. I have separate tutorials on my channel to do that. But you can see that the mood of the song can influence the entire edit, which is another reason why you'd want to pick it beforehand if the song is important to the edit and not just background music. 
Now, although the song might be following a structured tempo, whenever you have video clips that you're working with, these are all gonna be different lengths. So, you know, one might be five seconds, one might be much longer, one might be shorter. And so the, the video clips have their own lengths and rhythms that might make you hold one for only, you know, a few beats of the song and one of them is longer and you want to show more action happening, you might have to hold that for a few more beats. And naturally, as you're editing out, typically, you know, edit, this is all in kind of an art and a choice, but I like to edit out clip by clip and kind of build them like bricks. So if I know that this keyboard shot, or if I know that this, this drum shot is going to cut into this close-up drum shot. So the clicks themselves have given me this natural kind of duration to work with. Now I go and try to find where this fits into the rhythm of the music. So perhaps I'll cut it when the piano comes in or add a drum hit. Or you can hold the clip longer if it is a longer clip and you need it that way. You know, just remember the, the more cuts that you have in the video, the kind of faster paced the video is going to feel if it's constantly cutting. And you don't have to make it always so robotic. This is why video editors end up hating the songs that they edit to and work with is because you're going to play it over and over and over as you're building out this project clip by clip. So you're probably going to get tired of it. But I do recommend just giving it a listen trying to feel when that would work and not trying to get all specific based on some exact frame based on the visual. Now, not only are there cuts in between clips, but within every clip there's action happening. So for example, in this clip, obviously this is not, you know, the, the original recording of this song is probably different than the song I use. So it might look weird because he's drumming at a certain tempo. But in this clip, you have action happening in this case, the guy hitting the drums. Not only do you want to cut to this clip at an appropriate moment, you also want the action in this clip, whether it's uh, someone punching someone or someone jumping, or if the clip is in slow motion or fast motion, you also want to consider how those actions within the clip line up with the, the beat and the mood of the song. Certain portions of the song, um, like the bridge or other parts, they kind of open up, they might be a chance for a slow motion shot. Certain portions of the song might um, be fast and, and be some chance for some speed ramping. So that goes into another tip. Um, not only can you cut to a beat, you can also add effects, especially if it's a music video, to the beat. So for example, if I added some sort of creative color flash, let's say a tint on this clip, I don't know, let's just do a red tint on this clip. And I made that kind of pulse at the beginning of the hit. And I added some keyframes. So it goes to from 100% to zero. Then we kind of have this effect where there's a, there's a, there's an effect, not just a cut happening at a certain hit of the music which depends on, on what you're working on. It could be a creative music video where you do see a lot of effects. Um, but if you're not working on a music video, perhaps you're just going to want to stick to just the visual pacing and, and the tempo of it. And also keep in mind, there's camera work going on. If you have a clip with, a, with just a static tripod shot or just a standstill shot, that might work better in some areas. Whereas if you have a clip where the camera is whipping and panning around quickly, uh, that also could be a sort of beat on the clip for you to try to match with a beat on the audio. You can also always highlight the clip and you have all sort of effects that you can actually adjust about a clip. So you can adjust the volume, the levels. If you go to the effects panel, you can even get more advanced and work with different audio effects and add you know reverb or underwater and you know low pass but let, typically that's for you know doing special audio effects but one of the most useful ones is the same way you can just 
fade out of a, a video clip, just dissolve out. You can also right click and apply default transition out of an audio clip. Now most produced tracks are going to naturally fade out in some way that makes sense. But a lot of, a lot of times when you're working for social media, you might just be using, you know, 30 seconds of a song that sound good. So you might want to fade into it or fade out so that it still feels natural even though you're cutting it off before the end of a song. And if you're not doing that, you can also try to make the song finish exactly at the at a, a beat or a cut or exactly at the end of a, sort of a four bar segment. So I've kind of dumped out a lot of information and tips for you, some philosophy on editing to the beat and editing clips to music. Again, this video is sponsored by ritualmusic.com. If you do want a place to get royalty free music for your videos, you can check out the link in my description and use my code Justin Odisho for 20% off your subscription or they have a free trial and some free tracks available for you there. My name is Justin Odisho. You can subscribe to my channel and check out a bunch of other videos to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.